Hello, everybody. I'd like to welcome you once again here to St. John Vianney Parish. I'm Father Ed Corna, pastor of St. John's. And once again, I'm going to do one of my homily series. I've done some that have gone on for five or six weeks. Sometimes I've done short ones. This is, again, going to be a little short one just for the next three Sundays. But I'm very happy to come to you via this uh, technology. You know, the coronavirus has been tough on all of us, but God always brings some good out of every bad situation. And the good that he has brought out is a greater use of technology to evangelize, to uh, pray, and to get the message out that, as Father Alex says, that God is good. Well, first of all, let me just begin with a couple little quips here, again from a... Uh, local newsletter. These are kind of very, as I would say, deadpan jokes. It reminds me years, years ago of the comedian who used to be on Ron Martin Laffin. I think that was Pat Paulson. Pat Paulson would deliver these jokes uh, in kind of a monotone voice, and uh, they were very, very deadpan type of jokes. So here's a uh, Two for us. Went down to the paint store to get thinner. It didn't work. A truck of Vicks vapor rub overturned on the highway. Amazing. There was no congestion for eight hours. Well, deadpan humor to uh, start the homily series. You know, we're still in the Easter season. It's the last couple weeks of Easter. This uh, Sunday is the Feast of the Ascension. Next Sunday is Pentecost Sunday, and Pentecost ends Easter time. And then after Pentecost Sunday, we have two more Sundays of very important solemnities. We celebrate the solemnity of the Holy Trinity, and then Corpus Christi, the body and blood of Christ. After that, we go back to wearing the green vestments. We go back to the long season of ordinary time that will take us through spring, summer, and autumn, all the way to the first Sunday of Advent. In this brief series, I'm going to speak about the next steps of discipleship. We are called then to always be the Lord's disciples, to continue to deepen our faith. And just the other day, it was on the uh, 11th of May, I saw in the religious news that Pope Francis just uh, released a um, apostolic letter. It's called the Latin Antiquum Ministerium, which means ancient ministry or ancient service. This apostolic letter that he authored and released is about catechesis, about teaching the faith. He says that catechesis, catechists, you know, for example, like our school teachers who teach religion, our religious education teachers, what we used to call CCD teachers, our RCIA teachers, our leaders of adult uh, formation and small groups. Well, those people technically are called catechists. And the Pope says it's an ancient, ancient ministry in the church. And Pope Francis, just like several popes before him, wants to once again elevate the office of catechist. As a matter of fact, the Pope uh, is giving directives to have uh, important blessings for the people who do that. And not just the little perfunctory blessings that we do like on Catechetical Sunday, but something much more formal to introduce catechists as official ministers of the church, just as lectors, Eucharistic ministers, and altar servers, and cantors are known as ministers of the church. So to catechists, teachers of faith formation, are very much ministers of the faith. I mention that because the Pope in his letter also says that by extension, 
Well, all of us are catechists. He says that all of us are missionaries. We are all called to live the gospel. We're called to teach the gospel. We're called to spread the gospel to those around us. And that is part of our disciples' journey. Today is the ascension of the Lord. After 40 days of Jesus being with the apostles after Easter, he eventually told them that he was returning to his heavenly Father. And he said that if I do not go, the Holy Spirit won't come to you. So while the apostles were saddened that Jesus was leaving, Jesus assured them that the third person of the Holy Trinity would be with them always, always. And so when Jesus ascends into heaven, notice what he says. Before he ascends, he says, Go out to all the world and proclaim the gospel to everyone. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. And in the first reading today, when the apostles are looking up as Jesus is taken up into heaven, the angels say to the men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up to the heavens? They say, go and now take this gospel, this good news to others. So as disciples, we are called to once again pray, to grow, to participate, to share, and to encourage. And in the next three weeks, I will speak about each of these. But if we are to indeed live our faith, if we are indeed to spread our faith, we always must be people of prayer. And I've mentioned this in my last two homily series also. And I know many of you have taken up that challenge to pray at least five minutes a day. But of course, many of us pray much, much more than that. Pope John the 23rd once said that prayer is the breath of my life. Just as we take an air to survive, so too we need prayer to survive spiritually. So again, continue to pray. If you're praying 10 minutes, wonderful. You can pray more than that, wonderful also. And as Catholic Christians, so many different ways to pray. Spontaneously, just being in silence, Eucharistic adoration, praying the rosary. If you can't pray a whole rosary, maybe just pray one decade of it. If you can't uh, have a full hour of Eucharistic adoration, half hour, 15 minutes, that'll be good. Because those are all baseboards, those are all jumping off periods where we get deeper and deeper in our love for the Lord. Again, uh, coming to know the Lord is not about is not just knowing about Jesus. We can know a lot about the Bible, a lot about the sacraments, a lot about the commandments. But knowing about is not transformational. Knowing is transformational. Knowing Jesus, knowing the sacraments knowing God's law and God's love. Because that is the experience, and the experience is transformational. The head stuff, not so much transformational. Yes, it's necessary. We have to know something about our, our faith in an intelligent fashion, but it can never stop there. We always have to go from knowing about to knowing. And again, it's a life challenge for all of us. It's not going to happen by the, the 4th of July. It continues uh, to grow in us. So again, the next step of any disciple is to pray. When Jesus called the apostles, I believe Mark's gospel said, Jesus called them to be with him. That's what prayer is, being with Jesus, privately and communally as the body of Christ at Mass. A second way for us to get into that next step of the disciples' journey is obviously growing in our faith. How wonderful it was that in the 
Lenten season, we had several small groups. And we hope to continue that in the fall, because come the fall, we all make our commitments to the Lord. Uh, our stewardship commitments, our prayer commitments, our service commitments. And so what I'm saying today prepares us. We can meditate on this over the long summer season so that we can really be his disciples now and to make commitments, to make a covenant with him come the autumn. So we continue to grow, read the Bible. It's not meant to be a book on a nightstand or on a shelf, but to be read. Uh, read the catechism, good Catholic literature. As I just mentioned a moment ago, we're going to start small groups again. We have many ongoing small groups. These are all ways that we grow. And not only do we grow in our faith, but we grow with other people in our faith. And that's the big bonus. We're not alone in our faith. Our faith is always for and with other people also. So, a next step of discipleship is again prayer. When we pray, we become the Lord's ambassadors. We come closer to him. When we grow, we uh, grow through scripture, other good Catholic books, again, individually or in small groups. And again, what we do is never just about the Lord, but it is the Lord. Not just knowing about, but truly knowing, truly experiencing. And what a beautiful day to experience the Lord on this Feast of the Ascension. Next week, Pentecost, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, I'll speak a little bit about participation, how we can participate even more actively in the life of St. John Vianney Parish, and to share what it means, again, to be good stewards of the multiple gifts given to us by God. So on this Feast of the Ascension, may you have a great Saturday, a great Sunday, and we just continue to rejoice in our faith. And God bless you. Thank you for being here today, either in person or via the wonderful marvel of technology. God bless you.